Welcome to episode 6 of my Morals and Values. Today is my final moral and value, or a moral value that means the most to me. And of course, I have multiple and they're ever adapting, but this moral value is the most important. The one I stand by, the one I always will stand by, the one that if everything else fails in life, if I have to only follow one thing in life, because it probably encapsulates everything I've said. Cherish time, cherish life. The points I'm going to make with this one, they're all so self-explanatory. I know I say this every time, but if you've watched any of my previous videos, the five other episodes on my morals and values, you can get a good grasp. You can determine what you take from this. You can use this in the context you need to use this in. You can adapt this to yourself. Take it in whichever way you need to. The whole point of these, for so these next points I'm going to make, I'll try not to waffle on. Because by now you should know these. You should understand these. And I want you to. And if you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll learn to. You can change your ways so you can. So cherish life. Cherish time. My first point, my first subheading for these. Love wholeheartedly and love to the max. And I think <laughs> it just, it does what it says on the tin. It is what it is. The ways you can do this, the ways I see this that I've written down, the way I do this is let people know how much you love them. Like, let people know how much you love them, how much you mean to them, how much they mean to you. One way I always look at this, and I've said before, is, is when my granny passed away, I was heartbroken. I was distraught. I was destroyed. It was awful for me. I hated it. And the reason I hated it is, of course, you love someone and you lose them. It's painful. It's horrible. But the reason I hate it is because I wasn't there for her. I, I hadn't shown her how much I loved her. I'd never been truly me around her. I didn't hug her or didn't tell her I love her all these times. I didn't call back. I didn't pick up the phone. It, it's these small things that you think are so insignificant. That actually, if you do these small things, if you do these one by one, the, these really small things, and this is the point I'll get onto later, that actually shows your love. You're showing what it is, and this is cherishing life. If you're loving wholeheartedly, everything you do, it comes from a place, you get to a point as well where you realise the things you're doing just make sense. They just work. It, They don't become a chore, it becomes effortless. It just happens. You become this person. So when I say love wholeheartedly and to the max, it may seem hard at first because you've got to do this, but actually in reality, just to send a text message, send a postcard maybe, tell someone you love them, it is actually normal. <laughs> it, whatever normal means, it's it, it, it's not a chore. It just works. You tend to do it all the time. And if people don't respect you for it, if people think it's too much and they don't like it, cool. They're not your friends. They're not the people you should be around. Because the people who truly value you will understand it and make sense of it and will love it. They'll be like, wow, I've never been loved this way before. For me, this also goes down the route of if you love someone, never let them go. And I think it's a weird one. When I mean if you love someone, never let them go, sometimes you do realistically have to let them go. That That is reality. Sometimes it's not going to work out. It's not going to be there. If you love someone, what I mean by never let them go is that love you have for them in your heart, never let that go. Whether you work out or not, whether you'll be there together, the way you felt, the person you were, who you were, and why you were that person, never let that go. Because that's the best you. Never let that feeling go. What you had, the memories. Because it made you a better person. It made you who you are. Never let that go. So if you love someone, never let them go in the sense that what you have was so unique, so important. And these are only a couple of ways to love wholeheartedly. 
But loving wholeheartedly can come in many forms, many ways that I'm still learning, that I still want to learn. But also I know there's ways I do it that maybe just because of my age, some people at my age don't do it, but I know I, I do it. And loving wholeheartedly is the way you look at it, is up to you, the way you decide to love wholeheartedly. Whether that's in a relationship, whether it's family, friends, whether it's a job, whether it's a life, whether it's a sport, you choose your way to love wholeheartedly. And all I say is, is love wholeheartedly. Love wholeheartedly and to the max always. Because at the end of the day, you have nothing to lose. Like I said, risk versus reward. The, the reward is far greater than the risk. Following on from loving wholeheartedly is my next point. And I think it's very similar. It can come under the same bracket. Is Follow your heart. Follow your dreams because life can change instantaneously. I know this from first-hand experience. I'm not just saying this as a cliche, as someone who just says, life can change in a heartbeat, but, but it genuinely can. And I'm not just talking about getting hit by a bus or hit by a car and dying in that sense, but that that is one of the things you could be living life and think you're living life or I think think you're there, but then suddenly you go out for a walk one day and you do get hit by a bus. For me, it was different. For me, I was 15 and within a week, I went from being a healthy young 15 year old, enjoying life, growing up, going through puberty, playing all the sport in the world, being with his friends, exploring, whatever it may be, what you do at that age as a very fortuitous 15 year old boy to suddenly being diagnosed with a life threatening illness that at the time I didn't realize would affect me for the rest of my life. And I don't necessarily mean the illness itself, but mentally the challenges, the physical challenges that I've had to overcome. I wouldn't change it for the world, but you know that. And and this is what I mean by follow your heart and dreams because it can change instantaneously. You could say all this time that I really want to do this, I really want to do this, I really want to do this, but you never go for it because you're too scared. You don't know how you'll do it. You don't know the path in front of you. You're uncomfortable. And I'm in that exact position now and I know that. I'm saying this as if I, I, I preach this and I'd be lying if I don't always live by this mantra because it's so much easier said than done. And I know this, but there's no point waiting around for something to happen. There's no point just thinking it's going to happen. If you want to go and do something, do it because you never know when you'll get that chance again. For me, one of the things I'm doing this year, which I thought I'd never do, is, is I'm running a marathon, particularly the New York Marathon. I never thought I'd do this, but the opportunity came up and I thought, you know what, if I was ever going to run a marathon, why not do it now? I could have easily put it off because there's other things I want to do for a year's time or a year after or the year after that. But then what came to my mind from my own personal experience is actually, what if I don't get that chance? What if I say I want to do this, but I never get this chance to do it again because I get ill, I get too busy? Something happens. I don't know what could happen. And that's what came to my, my, my mind. And so following your heart is, is doing you, whatever that may be. Follow your heart, whether it is a career, a job, traveling, family, friends. If it's love, if you love someone, follow your heart with them. Do what you need to do. If it works, it works. But you'd much rather, as I always say, you'd much rather have I tried than what if. So go and follow your heart. Because life can change instantaneously but knowing for you, someone else around you, and it could change it. So when you have this opportunity, when you have this chance, go for it. Go and do it. The other way I look at this as well, and the way you can get to this place, is by being present. I know I've spoken about this before, being present, but be present. Be present with this and this will come to fruition you'll you'll understand this more it's a weird one go look back at being present and you'll understand if by doing this you can be present you're not living in the future you're not living in the past life can change instantaneously you can't plan for your life to change in a year's time because you don't know so be present in what you're doing now 
with who you are now. This is very much a point that <laughs> when you are being present, when you have been present, when you will be present, you understand this. It clicks. It clicks in your head and, and you understand it. That's very much this point. I could talk about it for a long time, but until you've experienced it yourself, it's hard to know. Following on, you can't buy back time. So embrace the journey. And it's not always about the destination. This one has stuck with me for a very long time. And I even have it written on my cherished life is you can always earn money, but you can never buy back time. And... This one is, of course, coming from a very fortuitous position where I get to live at home, not paying rent at the moment. I can earn money. I can do this. There's people in this world who who do have to buy, sacrifice their time to earn money. But I think there's ways around this and there's ways you can get to this. And, and what this means for me is I know that time is so precious, that life is so precious. Going back to life can change instantaneously, it's the same with this. People wish away their lives to earn money. They say, at 30 I'll do this, at 35, at 40, or they spend their whole life working to earn money, so by the time they're 60 or 65, maybe even 70 when they retire, they're like, oh, finally I can go and do this. When in reality, you don't know if you'll get there. I know one thing my granny said and then passed down from my mum to me is, and my granddad is, they saved all this money to go travelling until they retired. And they retired and they were doing it. But my granny suddenly passed away at 75 within a week of, even less than a week. And one thing my granddad says is, or said, was they saved all this money, but they just wish they went sooner. They wish they went and did it sooner. They wish they didn't wait until the time because they thought it would be the best time and the other things and of course they had children and their grandchildren but the moral of, of the lesson the moral of this is is stop just putting things on hold of what you want to do because you think you'll get to have more money and do it better in 20 years time you just don't know. If you've got the opportunity to do it now, go and do it now. And that's what I'm trying to say, and that's what this means, is you don't always get that second option. You don't always... doesn't always work out the way you want it to work out, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And what I mean by that is you have to embrace the journey. You have to. There's going to be times where you're not always going to enjoy it. There's going to be hardship in life. There really is. Even if you're living your best life, there's going to be times where it's going to be hard. We know this. But because time is so short and life is so short, this journey that you're on, every day that you go by, make the most of it. Because there might be a world out there where you're chasing and you're chasing and you're chasing. And you know how I say about chasing. But you're chasing and chasing and chasing. You work your whole life to get to this destination. You've wished all this time away. You've been miserable, you've been upset, you've been sad, but you know, oh, I'm going to get to this place, I'm going to get to this place. You get to this place and boom. You get there and what? What's next? What is it? You've wished all this time away. You've wished these precious years of your life, this important years of your life growing up, being you. Because every, every year is important. It doesn't matter what age you are. And you get to this destination and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't make sense. I've, I've done the same. I thought getting to a destination would... I don't know, cure me. <laughs> would would make me feel better but I got to a destination and I realised that oh no it's not about the destination it's about the journey you've got to enjoy the journey you're on yes the destination is, is, is cool to get to but if you live your life just tasting destinations you'll never be fulfilled if you can make the most of the journey you're on every day the people you meet the people you're with it's incredible. And this will lead on to this, my last point that I come on to in a bit, why this makes sense. But 
for me, you've got to embrace the journey. It's not always about the destination. Remember, you can always earn money, but you can't buy back time. It's a cliche, it's why billionaires and millionaires use private jets. That time that you're wasting sitting in an airport is time they can spend the money on to fly somewhere quicker, to get somewhere quicker, to be somewhere quicker. It, it, it makes sense. I'm not saying it's right, but these billionaires, billionaires know this to a certain degree. So you can't buy back time. Just remember that. You can't buy back time. Fourth point with this is hope and belief. Always have hope and belief. And this, this is so much easier said than done. I'm, I'm saying this as if it's easy. Like, I always have hope and belief. It's a lie. I don't always have hope and belief. Of course I don't. You can't always do it. But, and, and, and it, I don't know. I, I do now. That's the thing. Then I look at life and there's times where it's hard and I'm in a pickle and I don't necessarily know what I'm doing in my life and I'm in a pit. But then... So I think it takes over in my brain and I have that hope and belief and I know that hope and belief is always there with everything. And the reason I have this, the reason I know this is, is not because I work to myself, but when I was ill, when I was on my deathbed, not once but twice, there was nothing, not one single part of me that would say that would, would be like I'm going to die. Not one single part, but in me, in my head, I always had that hope and belief that I'd get through, that I'd make it through this. And not even thinking about the bigger picture, not even thinking about what's to come afterwards. I just had that hope and belief that I would get through each and every day. And from there, it took me a long time to then use this into real life without working on myself. But in the last couple of years, I realised that I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be who I am today without hope and belief in everything I do. So why not take this through life? Why, even when I'm feeling bad or down and feel hopeless and don't have any belief, why should I lose that hope and belief? It's who I am today because of hope and belief, because I had that hope and belief in the darkest of times. And that's incredible. It's amazing. Hope and belief taken to every single walk of life, whether it's through illness, family members' illness, your illness, or love and relationships. Don't just give up. Like I said, don't give up. <laughs> never, never give up. By never giving up, you have the hope and belief. The reason you don't want to give up is because you have the hope and belief. Again, don't chase it. Don't force it. Don't beg and, and things like that. But have that hope and belief. It's what's got me to where I am now. It's played a significant part into who I am. And at the end of the day, if no one had hope and belief, we wouldn't have imaginations. We'd all be the same. We'd all aspire to be the same people. We'd, we'd all be the same. We'd all be boring. We'd all be normal. And you know what I think about normal? It's, it's, you know what I think about normal. If we didn't have that hope and belief, we wouldn't all be as unique as we are. We'd all, it just wouldn't work. So I think it's important to have that hope and belief. You need that hope and belief. Because if you didn't have hope and belief, life would be bleak. Hope and belief for a year's time, six months' time, but, but hope and belief every day as well. You have to. You, have, you just have to. And whether it's a tool just to pick you up and keep you going, or it's a tool that you use to keep you fulfilled, whichever way you need to use it, whatever context you want to use it, just, to, just have that hope and belief. My final point, which I have been talking about this whole time and saying I'll talk to it at the end, and it does go hand in hand. It is very similar to cherishing life and cherishing time. But cherish the small moments in life because that is what really matters. And this, this, yeah, 
No, this is this is the one that means the most to me. Without a shadow of a doubt. It's just cherishing the small moments. And I think with with everything in life, it's the small things that count. The little things that you just sort of eat away at each day that matter. Uh, but what do I mean by the small things anyway? The small things for me is is telling someone you love them, letting them know how you feel, saying please and thank you, telling someone, a stranger maybe, that you know what, your hair looks really good today. Holding the door open for someone, I don't know, maybe I said that one already, <laughs> but those are the small things, spending time with family, spending time with the people you love. Recently, I've learned that I'd love to travel and want to see the world, and it's amazing, but actually, it's not about where you are, it's about who you're with. And that's a small thing, that's cherishing the small things in life. And I think I learned, when I learned this, of course, is working on myself, but within the last year, year and a half, I, I learned that actually there's just so much more to life if you just love, if you just cherish the things around you, if you make the most of what's what you have. And you can find joy in that. You can find fulfilment. Instead of chasing fulfilment with these huge aspirations and goals, which which aren't wrong, we all need them. You can be so much more joyous and happy and fulfilled if you just make the most of what you have. Not even make the most of what you have, you just cherish what you have, not make the most of. So cherishing what you do have, instead of always looking at it. I, the one way I look at it as well is, is in August, the thought of me even starting what I'm doing now scared the heebie-jeebies out of me. <laughs> but actually, from just writing my first blog to where I am now it's actually looking at the journey but it's amazing and it's just a small thing each day that you break down it's I'm butchering this and I know I'm butchering this because I'm I if I'm being honest I can't really get it across the way I want to get it across I, I don't know how to it's just it's a feeling it's a way that when you start to cherish everything you have in life like smiling when you see your girlfriend or the person you love boyfriend whatever it may be and you're staring at them and you're smiling at them and they look at you and they ask you why you're smiling. It's the best feeling in the world because you know when you're looking at them and smiling, it's just that love for you, that admiration that you have for them. And you just like, wow, I've done, wow, I, this is incredible. The best feeling in the world. And that's what it is. It's just cherishing the small moments, the small things in life, because that's what really matters. Those small moments are moments that are going to stick with you forever, that you always have. So make the most of them. Everything in life can come crashing down, but if you have these small moments and you cherish them, then then that's it. That's it. And it goes. It is cherishing the small moments. It's just cherishing time. It's another way of looking at time and life. It's just cherishing them. It's just cherishing what matters, what really matters. Like I was always said from the start, it's it's not about the extrinsic things you have in life, it's about the intrinsic and the small <laughs> moments in life, cherishing them, are the intrinsic ones. They're not materialistic. And that's what really matters. And when you learn that, when you have this sense of freedom, this sense of I don't know. When you have this outlook on life, it just... I don't know. The way you look at life changes for the better. And that's my morals and values. And my most important one, cherish life and time. Love wholeheartedly and always to the max. Let people know how much you love them and... and if you love someone, never let them go. But you know why. You know why now. Follow your heart. Follow your dreams. Go after them. Because life can change instantaneously, within a heartbeat, in a way that you can't even imagine. You can't think about it. You can't plan for it. But it can change. And we all know this. We all have our own experiences. So follow your dreams. Follow your heart. Do that by being present. Be present in the moment. Remember, embrace the journey because it isn't just 
about the destination. The destination is something so small, minuscule, that actually the journey you're on is the most important thing. So make the most of the journey. There's going to be hard times and tough times, but embrace it. Because at the end of the day, you can always earn money, but you can never buy back time. Time is the most precious gift we all have. So make the most of it. Really, really make the most of it, whether that's career-wise, loving, looking after yourself, keeping fit and healthy, what you eat, whatever it may be. Time is precious. Carry hope and belief with you. Don't let hope and belief go, ever. Because we all need hope and belief, or we'd all be boring, and we'd all be the same. So have that hope and belief that you'll get to where you want to get to. Have that hope and belief that each day is going to be a better day. Have that hope and belief that you're the best person ever. Have it. Believe it. Hold on to that. It's the best thing you can hold on to. And finally, that rounds it all off is cherish the small things in life because that is what really matters. Cherish them. Really, really cherish them. The next time you smile at someone. The next time you say please and thank you. Or hold the door open to someone. Or don't be afraid to tell that person you love them. Don't be afraid to tell that other person that they've got a lovely dress on today. Or they've got lovely hair. Whatever it may be. Life is too short to not cherish the small moments. Life is too short not to be yourself. Life is too short to be worried about judgment and comparison. Life is what you make of it. To make of it what you will. Most importantly, cherish life. Cherish Boom. Most importantly, cherish life, cherish time.